For over 20 years, Mr. Shalom Mermelstein has been a full-time volunteer in the B Kor Cholim Society, and that's a society where they visit the sick and in the hospitals, doing acts of kindness every single day of his life. What inspired Rav Shalom to be such a Baal Chesed, such a man of kindness? It all began in the worst days of World War II. Shalom was born in a small, poor village called Pavlovo. Now, Shalom came a family that was known to everyone as men of chesed and women of chesed. His mother would get up at five in the morning to milk a little extra from her cows to give to the poor women who didn't have any cows. And Shalom's grandfather, Ben Sion Mermelstein, was always looking for opportunities to do kindness for others. When World War II began, Shalom's comfortable life went haywire. Shalom was taken away from his family and placed in a work camp where he struggled to survive. When word filtered that his home time had been liberated by the Russians, Shalom that decided that he had to take the chance and he decided he had to escape, to head back home. Shalom succeeded in escaping, but a long journey later ahead. Pavlovo was 150 kilometers away. And since he couldn't risk taking a train, he needed to make there by foot in the icy frozen winter with rags on his feet and the wind knifing through his thin clothing. Shalom nevertheless managed six kilometers every day, seeking shelter wherever he stopped for the night. One night, Shalom staggered into a small town only to discover that the place was filled with Russian soldiers. There's nowhere for him to lay his weary body down for a few hours rest. Desperate, he started going from door to door, begging for a warm corner out of the freezing wind. But the answer was always the same. We have Russian soldiers staying with us. And there is absolutely no room. Shalom finally reached the last house in the village. The small hut is certainly the, de- the home of an unruly peasant who would not be pleased by the interruption. Shalom knew that he was risking his life by disturbing the man's rest, but his choices were few. Either take the chance or risk freezing in the frigid night air. So he lifted his hand and knocked firmly on the door. The man who answered looked suspiciously at his unexpected guest. What do you want? He growled. I'm so sorry to disturb you, Shalom said. But would you happen to have a place in your home where I could sleep out of the cold? The man shook his head. Sorry. He opened the inner door where Shalom could see a small room with a bed and a sheep placidly standing in the corner. There's only enough room for one bed and my sheep. Shalom could see that the man really couldn't help him. I guess I'll have to sleep in the woods. Oh, you can't do that, the man exclaimed. There are wolves in the forest that would eat you alive. Shalom shivered in fear. Could I at least stay beneath the ledge that overhangs your house? Now give me a bit of shelter. The man gave his consent and went back inside. Shalom left outside in the frigid air, breathed a silent prayer to God to keep him from freezing during the long, cold night that lay ahead. A short while later, the door opened. By the way, what's your name? The peasant called out. I am Ben Sion Mervonstein's grandson, Shalom heard himself reply. He was momentarily puzzled. Why had he said that? The peasant grew visibly excited. You're Ben Sion Mervonstein's grandson from Pavlovo? That's right. Why do you know of him? Of course I do. For 40 years, there used to be a big market day. Many of us would walk for days with our cows to get to the market, and we needed a place to stay along the way. Your grandfather always let me stay in his barn. And in the morning, he would offer me a glass of whiskey to help me get through the day. I'll never forget what he did for me. I'll never forget that glass of whiskey. Then the man beckoned and showed him into his house. He prepared some potatoes, milked some ounces of milk from the sheep, and handed some food to show him. Then he let Shalom sleep on the bed while he slept on the floor beneath him. Shalom awoke in the morning feeling fresh and invigorated from the comfortable night. He thanked the man for his help and thanked God for showing him the kindness which has saved his life and the merit of the kindness his grandfather had performed for others. So one never knows when one does an act of kindness how far that will go. May you have a day full of kindness. I died, I died, I died.